just tilt this a little bit. There we go. So I'm hoping I'm live and you can see me. I'm sorry I'm a couple of minutes late starting today. Um, I don't have any reason. I came in at the usual time to set up and it obviously just took me a bit longer today. Perhaps it's because it's Friday. Anyway, how's your Friday going? I hope you're here, I hope you're watching, I hope you're ready to see some crafting and some new goodies today. I'm just going to, as always, check over on my iPad to make sure that uh, you can see what I want you to see. And I haven't checked my iPad yet because I've just realised that although I have my microphone plugged in, I did not have it attached to my person near my face. So probably you didn't hear any of what I just said to you, but it was just a hello and an apology for being a few minutes late starting today. So now I'm gonna have a look at my iPad and see if I'm there. Okay, it looks like I am. Brilliant, Marjorie's here, hello Marjorie. And Sandy's here, she spent the morning in her craft room. Excellent, that's exactly what I want to hear, Sandy. Um, I'm pleased you did and I hope it's left you feeling relaxed and a bit more at peace with the world. I'm just gonna turn down the volume on my iPad because you don't need me in two places at once. There we go, Gillian is here. Hi, Gillian. There we go. Lost my comments, comments are back. Gillian's saying good afternoon. It's lovely to have you again, Gillian. Uh, and Belinda's here. She says hi to everyone. So that's fantastic. Lots of people here already. Um, maybe it's because I was late. Anyway, I'm very sorry I was late. I have no excuse. Um, I was just slower setting up than, uh, than usual. So it's Friday. It's the end of my first working week. It's been a wonderful week. Very busy. Um, I've absolutely loved spending time with you every day, chatting and crafting. I wish I could do it every day actually, I think it would be so much fun, um, but I can't, my schedule doesn't allow for it and probably yours doesn't either <laughs> if we're honest. Um, so whether you're watching this live, whether you're watching it on Facebook on the replay uh, or if you're watching it on my YouTube channel, thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm going to be focusing on a, another new suite of goodies from the new catalogue, the Fine Art Floral Suite. Um, I, I've kind of got three favourites really, I love the Dandy Garden. I love the Sea and Sand suite and I also love this one, Fine Art Floral. Um, I know Belinda's been doing lots with it already, maybe some of the rest of you have as well. Um, Belinda has done some absolutely amazing uh, creations. So uh, if you are a member of my uh, Paper Crafters group, that's people who attend my classes, then you'll be able to see Belinda's beautiful work there. Uh, if you come to my classes but you're not part of that Facebook group and you'd like to, let me know and I'll add you. Um, it's just a social group really, we so miss meeting together, crafting together, having tea and cake together um, that it's nice to be able to do it online while we can't actually meet in person. Um, there's lots of chat there and it's really nice to see what people are crafting as well. We've got lots of amazing photographs there. It's really nice to get inspiration from all of you. So if you'd like to be a part of that, let me know. Lorraine is here. Hello Lorraine. Uh, and Mary's here too and Rosie's here. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> Rosie's saying gilding flakes, several exclamation marks. Yes, indeed, it is gilding flakes today. Um, and Pam is here, she says hello to everyone. And Ruth's here, fantastic. Um, I think I've missed a comment somewhere. Let me just have a look. No, maybe I haven't. Okay, Rosie says hi. Um, and Ruth's replying to Belinda and she's saying they are wonderfully inspiring products. Indeed they are. Right, so I think I'm just going to move you straight down to my table and show you this suite. And then I've got a couple of demonstrations and some ideas for using the gilding flakes, which are a part of this suite. And they're probably the bit I'm most excited about of all the, the things in it. So um, I will give you some ideas and some how to's on that. So I'm going to cover you over. Um, we're pink today. It's a pink post-it if I can reach it. Um, so we're going to go pink, then I'm going to fiddle around, uh, try and remember to set the buttons so I'm not upside down when I come back, and I'll see you again in a minute. Alright, so let's turn this down towards my desk. Try and get you a little bit higher yes, uh, today than I was yesterday. Yesterday was okay, but it's really nice if I can show you 
the whole of the um, patterned paper, which is 12 inches square. I don't know how well I'll be able to do that because there are limits on how high my stand will go, but I will try. Okay, let me see if I can find these buttons that put me up the right way and mean that what you're looking at isn't back to front. There we go. I'll try and avoid hitting the special effects because we don't want any of those. Okay, we've got Sylvia here. Hello Sylvia, how nice of you to join us. I think probably you haven't been to one of my lives before but you're nonetheless welcome for that so I'm pleased you're here. Belinda's poised with her gilding flakes and the hoover. Okay, so I've got a couple of tips to try to reduce the mess on the gilding flakes because I know not everybody loves mess. Okay, so the post-it note is coming off and once my iPad catches up, um, I will be able to see if I need to move anything. Oh, that's not too bad, is it? Let's just move this down and across a little bit. I think today I'm actually going to make a little mark on my grid paper um, to try and show what my boundaries are. So let's try that and see if I can actually keep things in view for you because I'm very good at putting them too high so they go completely out of shot and that's no help to anybody. Okay, so Rosie's saying that you don't need the hoover of the gilding flakes. You didn't make a mess at all. Fantastic, Rosie. Well done. I know you were slightly hesitant, weren't you, about opening them, but I'm really pleased that you've had a little play. I think they're fabulous. So if you've got your spring catalogue in front of you, no, I mustn't call it spring catalogue. What is it? It's called the January to June mini catalogue. Okay. Um, then the Fine Art Floral Suite is on page 32. Um, the first page is just full of beautiful inspiration. And there's a very quick how-to down the bottom for one way of using the, the gilding, I'm calling them gilding flakes, gilded leafing is what Stamping Up actually call them. So to try to avoid confusion, I'll try and remember to call them that for you as well. Rosie thought her gilding flakes would go poof and they didn't. No, good. I'm very pleased. <laughs> Alright, so on the opposite page, page 33, we've got all the different things in the suite um, and I've got all of these to actually show you because some of the pictures here are really, really small. So the suite consists of a set of stamps and dies and as always these are bundled together so if you buy the two together with a special code you can save 10%. There's some acetate with gold and silver printing on it which is just beautiful. These are the gilded leafing, which we've been talking about, or I've been talking about quite a lot. There's some ribbon here. There's a painted texture embossing folder, heat and stick powder, and a pack of designer series paper. So I'm going to show you all of those things, IRL, as my daughter would say, in real life. Um, but just over one more page, you've got much better images of the stamp set and the dies. Um, so this is actual size here, so you can see that the stamps are a reasonably good size, nice for all kinds of projects. But I'm going to move my catalogue out of the way and come in with the actual items. So here's my stamp set and I'll show you these images stamped out. Uh, the stamps are photopolymer, which means that they're see-through. They will stain, that's uh, an unavoidable issue with um, photopolymer stamps, but it doesn't affect the way they work at all and they remain see-through. So don't worry about that. They seem to stain pink no matter what ink you use on them. So um, <laughs> it's one of the vagaries of photopolymer. But this is a two or even a three step stamping set. So photopolymer stamps mean that you can see where you're going to stamp one image on top of another. If I bring in my stamped images here, you can see then that you've got lots of floral images and this set also has a lot of words in it. So if you're short on sentiments, it's a really good set for that point of view. So there's a large flower, which is lovely when you use the single stamp, but there's also a detail stamp here. And there's a third detail stamp, which actually can be used on all the flowers. So Sandy's going, wow. Yeah, it is pretty wow, Sandy, I must say. Um, here I've stamped the biggest one with that layer on top. And I will be showing you some of my samples which where I've used the third layer. There's also this little image here, 
This one looks a little bit almost like a rhododendron flower to me. I think these flowers are very, um, I can't think what the word is I'm looking for. They're not, not a specific type, they're kind of a general kind of flower. I mean, this could be a double poppy. Um, when you put the variegation on them, they look a little bit like Alstroemeria. They could be all kinds of flowers, which is, is brilliant. So this is that single bloom, which looks a bit like you're seeing it from the side. And then I've added this small stamp on top. And then there is a flower stem here with buds and a leaf. And actually this little one here will also fit all three of the flowers on the stem. I haven't actually stamped them on there, but they will, they will um, combine beautifully with that stamp. And then you've got a leaf stem here as well. So those are all the kind of the floral bits and pieces. Generic, thank you, Sandy. That is exactly the word I was looking for. Brilliant. And then there are all kinds of words. There's happy birthday, you are lovely, best wishes, congratulations, I'm thinking of you, good luck, thank you, sorry, and I miss you. Uh, those are so useful. Uh, it's a really clear, neat font. It's a good size, so it works on the inside of a card or on the front. So let me move that out of the way and I'll bring in the dies. So they're just the standard metal dies and I've got them cut here because I think that's much clearer to see. So the first thing to see is this big just want to say. These are words are all on one die here. Um, I've spaced them out a little bit more here than when you cut them, but obviously you can leave them however you want. My top tip for cutting these out is watch out for the dot on the J because I've twice lost that and ended up having to recut it. So when you get your bits of card out of the die, don't lose that. It just doesn't quite look right without it. And that just want to say, of course, coordinates really, really well with the words. I just, just want to say happy birthday, just want to say you are lovely, just want to say sorry, etc., etc. You've got two little layering pieces here, which are a little bit like the edging of post uh, postage stamps. And then these images here will cut out the stamped images. As you can see, you've got one for this one for that, for that, and for here. So those cut those out really nicely. Um, they will also cut out certain images in the patterned paper, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So that's really handy. And then I just cut out some of the stamped images here just to show you what they look like cut out. So that is those. I'm going to show you the embossing folder, which is beautiful. It's a 3D folder, so the embossing on it is at more than one depth. The picture on the pack actually does show the pattern really well. So it's a little bit as if you had got a palette knife or a large paintbrush with lots and lots of oil paint on it and had then just swiped that um, in very sort of definite strokes across your canvas. Rosie loves the word dies. Yeah, they are so useful, Rosie. Now, I've actually embossed a piece of card here. This is old olive card. Um, put it that way, I might fit it in a little bit better there. So I'm hoping that you can see the texture on that. It's really beautifully deep. And I'm going to show you this used with some of the gilding flakes in a minute. I've got the ribbon here which is a natural linen ribbon with a gold thread through it. So it's very pretty and sparkly. Welcome Candy, you've just joined us. I'm so glad you could. There we are. Um, this ties really nicely in a knot. Even just a single knot like that, just the sort you'd start a bow off on your shoe with. It just ties really, really nicely. And it also ties into bows nicely. Let's see if I can do that live as well. It's always, always a challenge to do this when there are people watching me. I've got a little bit of a twist in that loop, but it'll give you the idea anyway. There you are. 
So it's a nice firm ribbon, but it's soft enough to tie easily. And if you just want to put a band across your card as well, it's wide enough to, to make a bit of a statement on its own. So lovely ribbon. You will want to cut the end at a diagonal because it's linen. It does fray very, very easily. Um, but if you cut a, a good diagonal across it when you finish tying your bow or whatever, that will be absolutely fine. All right, let me put that out of the way and I'm going to bring in the paper and the acetate to show you. So the designer series paper is a pack of 12 sheets. They're 12 inches square and you get two each of six double sided designs. I can't show you the whole sheet. I cannot get my camera up high enough. Um, but I will do my best. So this is one pattern. Um, the big flower die will cut out these large flowers on here. And I haven't actually played with the little one, but I suspect that will also cut out some of the other flowers. Yeah. So you can cut direct from the patterned paper if you want to. And again, I'll lift it up and try and show you. These have a really beautiful hand-painted look to them. These were, in fact, hand-painted by one of Stampin' Up's designers and then photographed and turned into paper. And even the background here, for instance, I don't know if you can see just there, you can actually see the brush strokes of the white paint. It's absolutely beautiful. If you turn that over, then this looks a little bit like um, a patterned paper that was printed on top of painting in the dark colour and then had some white paint added over the top. This one I suspect you're either going to love or hate. I really love it. Um, if you like neat and tidy, this side of the paper maybe isn't for you, but actually it's really pretty and it will give an, a real hand-painted look to your projects. This is another one which I'll probably have to move up and down for you. So this has a blue background and it looks stunning as a whole piece of art. This would be beautiful put in a frame with maybe some stamped and punched butterflies or dragonflies or bees on it. If I move it down, hopefully that will give you a good idea. But you can equally cut it up. You'll get at least six card fronts out of this if you want to cut it up. And it works surprisingly well. Um, you, cut, you can cut sections. And I don't know what have I got that I can show you that divider section off. Let's do it with this top corner if I can. If I just use some card just to mark off some sections. There we go. Something like that. So you can see that that will actually work fine cut up. If you scrapbook it would be absolutely beautiful as a 12 by 12 scrapbook page but don't be frightened to cut it up. On the other side of that is a beautiful soft turquoise painted background. It's reminiscent of the embossing folder in style. The next one, this one is similar to that blue one in that it's a whole 12 by 12 sheet which works uncut but you can also cut it up into pieces. Again it's got this hand painted look. Okay so Rosie doesn't like one side but loves the other side. Okay I'm assuming you like the flowers and you don't like the backs is that right Rosie? So this again is, is a very hand-painted look. I'll read the colours off the pack for you in just a minute. This one too is very pretty. This is little sprays of flowers. Uh, it's lovely in larger pieces or for a bag or a box, but also beautiful cut up. And the other side of that is a pattern overlaid on top of some sort of pale pinky orange paint. This design is another all over one. We've got a grey background here with turquoises, yellows and orange flowers with white. And the back I think is really beautiful. I love these colours. Rosie's talking about the acetate sheet. Absolutely Rosie. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. I saw your beautiful card you made with the acetate sheet. 
um, and I wanted to make one exactly the same but I didn't because I've only got one acetate sheet and I wanted to show everyone whole first so I haven't cut mine yet and then this one has just got these pretty little pink flowers they look like roses to me old, an old-fashioned rambling rose and then we have a yellow pattern on the back again with that kind of painted look to it Rosie likes the blue back oh good always nice to have a choice where you like both sides the good thing with having 12 sheets in a pack is that uh, you can use each side if you want to now I mentioned the acetate and so did Rosie so the um, ooh, trying to just get it without knocking everything going sorry about that I just moved the grid paper um, I can never remember what things are called when we first get them golden garden designer specialty speciality acetate which is a bit of a mouthful all right so there are three sheets of acetate and I've just got a little snippet of one here which just to show you the two sides so it's called golden garden and one side is indeed golden but if you turn it over it's silver on the back and I must admit I thought the silver would just look a bit like the wrong side if you know what I mean it wouldn't really look like it was intended to be used that way um, but I was wrong uh, it looks absolutely perfect used with a silver side and in fact I've done a card using that silver side so I'll show you so this is the the whole sheet I've have used a little bit of this one so gold on one side silver on the other And then where it really comes into its own is the other two sheets sit perfectly on top of some of the designer series paper. Let me just get this in a good position to show you. So this is an all over design. It doesn't really have a right way round. And if I lay the acetate over the top, I'll show you the acetate separately in a minute. You can see that there are gold outlines to frame the flowers and to frame some of the leaves. And then there are additional leaf sprigs which just cover over separate background parts of the paper. So this is the paper underneath and then with the acetate on top. And then if I lay that down on its own, you can see it without the paper. And if I turn it over, it's the same pattern, but silver on the back. So the acetate sheets work on their own or on top of the paper. Uh, you can cut down the paper and cut down the acetate sheet for a card front. It's absolutely beautiful. Belinda's saying the acetate is great as an overlay and her projects next week are using acetate. Belinda is sharing projects both on uh, my team page. Belinda is in, in my team of demonstrators and our wider team um, has a featured stamper each month. We're very lucky that Belinda is that featured stamper for January because she's been really treating us to some beautiful projects. And she's kind enough to also share them in my paper crafters group. So uh, if you're not a member and you want to see them, as I said earlier, do ask and I can add you to that. And the third sheet of acetate in the pack fits beautifully onto this piece, which has got the, the all over, or the one page design, if you like. Lorraine says, will the acetate be in the sample pack, in this, the sweet sample? Yes, it will, Lorraine. And thank you for reminding me to talk about that. Um, I will be doing a sweet sampler, which is some um, a, a, a small amount of each of the products, not the dies and the stamps. You can add those on as an extra in the embossing folder, but it will be samples of, well, I say samples, partial packs, let's put it that way, of the acetate and the paper and the ribbon, um, the gilding flakes and the heat and stick as well. Um, I will be offering that in May um, and it means that if you really like this and want to have a play with it you don't have to buy a whole pack of absolutely everything. Um, so my sweet sampler for January is the Dandy Garden and um, the one for May will be this one. So yes Lorraine you will get some of the acetate in that. Um, I haven't worked out quite how much yet um, so what I'm trying to do is to keep the price to an affordable level whilst also giving you usable amounts of, um, of all the products. So this is really lovely, but once again, you can cut it down if you want to. I'll put it down without the paper underneath so you can see on its own it's really pretty and delicate. If you were doing um, a wedding or anniversary project, this would be absolutely beautiful. And the silver side is equally lovely. 
Belinda's encouraging you to join my paper crafters group if you aren't a member. She says it's a lovely group. It's a really friendly group and we see some beautiful photographs of everybody's projects in there. Now I promised that I would read you the colours that are in the paper. And I'm just pulling over my wrapping just to read them off here. So there are lots of colours in the paper. Bumblebee, Flirty Flamingo, Merry Merlot, Mossy Meadow, Knight of Navy, Old Olive, Petal Pink, Pool Party, Poppy Parade, Pumpkin Pie, So Saffron, Terracotta Tile and Whisper White. There we go. Now I'm going to show you some projects and I must just have some tea first because <laughs> I'm getting a very dry mouth. So I'll pop one there for you to have a look at and I'm just going to drink some of my tea. I hope you've got a cup of something nice by the side of you. I was inspired by several other demonstrators cards I saw who had used greys and silvers and I actually thought it was so elegant so this is the let me pull that down a bit um, hopefully that's better for you to see it all um, I'll lift it up a little as well so I used the embossing folder on the background uh, it's just an ordinary white card um, and it just adds so much texture Rosie says she loves this. She's in the hot tub. Rosie uses a hot tub um, to help her relax, but also to reduce pain in her back after a very bad car accident she had. So I like to think of you in the hot tub, Rosie. I'm assuming you don't have your building plates in there with you. I then stamped the large flower. Um, I used smoky snake, slate, can't speak, smoky slate and grey granite inks for that. So I used two of the stamps, one on top of the other with the stem and I die cut those. This is the little postage label also from the die set and I've stamped it with I'm thinking of you that's from the same stamp set as the flowers. I added a piece of that acetate on top and used the silver side and then I've just added a little piece of grey granite ribbon in a bow. Yes Rosie's gone slightly hysterical at the thought of gilding flakes in the hot tub but she <laughs> said she might try it. <laughs> All right, so that's that photo, uh, that, that card. Uh, the next ones I'm going to show you all have the gilding on them. I was going to try and only do gilding on some, but it's a bit like one or two other things uh, that uh, once you start, you don't really want to stop. I was a bit like that yesterday. If you saw yesterday's Sea and Sand um, live video where I was just adding those little opal rounds to everything. And today I've been like it with the gilding. Um, it's just so lovely. I didn't want to, to miss it off anything really. So this is a yellow card. It's actually very, very simple. It's only simple stamping with the addition of a little bit of gilding. And I am going to show you how to do the gilding. So don't panic that I, I haven't done that. My card base is so saffron and I've got a layer of gold foil. And my flowers are stamped in so saffron and then over stamped with Daffodil Delight to just give a subtle, darker tone. And then I've used this really small stamp in the centre of the flowers um, and I've gilded that. So as I say, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. I've used the thank you from the stamp set and both the dies to make my little label die cuts, I should say, are from the many messages die, which I highlighted on Tuesday. That's one large die that cuts out lots and lots of labels at once. Um, and I've started, you know, taking, for instance, a piece of gold foil, cutting the whole die on the gold foil. And then I've got, I don't know how many it is, have any of you counted how many little labels there are in that die? Um, I don't know, about 20 I should think. I've got them in a bag and actually it's really easy. I can now just layer up to my heart's content and it saves a lot of time. So Rosie's going wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you very much. And these are the gold faceted gems. I just popped a couple on there. Um, here's another one. So this has got a little bit more going on because I've used the patterned paper on here as well. Rosie says she thinks there are 26 individual labels on that many messages die. Thank you, Rosie. So I'll try and show you the whole of this if I can. So my card base and this layer is Flirty Flamingo. 
and I've stamped over it. I actually only stamped around the edges of that layer because the whole of the centre is hidden with this piece. Um, with that small flower die, which is this one, using flirty flamingo ink. And then I cut a piece of paper from one of those pieces I showed you that uh, is like the all over pattern. Let me bring it in and I'll show you the one I mean from this paper. And it is, I think, is it the top section? I think I ended up with it. I think it's this bottom section here. But anyway, I cut a piece and layered it onto some gold foil. Then I stamped the large flower using uh, petal pink for the base layer, over stamped it with flirty flamingo, and then smallest stamp of all for the gilding. Uh, my leaves and stem are in mossy meadow. And then I've just stuck that flat on top of the paper. And then I've used the two labels from the same die set. So I've stamped on the white one and then the smaller one, this one, I cut that in mossy meadow and then I cut it in half. And then I just attached one half behind either end of my white label. So that green die isn't a really, really long one because it, it's not behind it there. It, it starts about here and goes out and starts about here and goes left. So if that's not a trick you know, it's an absolutely brilliant one for making it look as if you have two different sizes of the same label. I could have equally done it with the same white one. I just had this one and it didn't take as much card to cut a small one. And I only need a little bit peeking out either end. So just cut it in half and slide it behind and glue it in place. And then I've used a little piece of that pretty ribbon just to catch the light. Just put that die back so I don't lose it. Belinda says she loves that one. Thank you, Belinda. I'm very pleased. And then the final card sample I'll show you before we get on to gilding is this one. So I've used one of the all over papers here. I've layered it onto Mossy Meadow and then onto a Merry Merlot card base. And because the stamps and dies and paper all coordinate, I've then stamped on my paper with the image that is the second layer, if you like, if I bring this in. So that image is on my paper and then I over stamped it with that one which I have then gilded. Then I attached some Mossy Meadow card to one of the foam adhesive sheets. If you haven't come across these, these are in the annual catalogue. And it's um, like our dimensional adhesive. It's that kind of idea, but in a sheet. So it's a foam. It's, what is it, about a sixteenth of an inch thick, something like that. And you peel off the backing and then that is sticky. So it's sticky both sides. So all I did was I cut a piece of card the right size for the die. Um, I cut a piece of foam the same size as the card. Peeled off the backing of the foam and stuck the card onto the foam and then I die cut that. So I die cut my sandwich of card and foam all in one go. And then I just popped them out and peeled off the backing. So my words here were sticky on the back and it just meant that they stuck down beautifully. And then I have this dimensional, I don't know if that's going to show or not, um, dimensional wording on here. I'll tip that a little bit more and hopefully you can see it. I did in fact cut it from Mossy Meadow and stick it on here flat without the foam adhesive, but it was just um, fighting with the background paper a little bit more than I wanted. It wasn't too clear to read. So then I did as I've just described and recut it with the card and the foam and I just stuck it on top of the words that I'd already stuck down. Um, so if you can see a little hint of, of green at the bottom, that's why. And then I've wrapped around some of the, um, what's this called, braided linen trim. This is in the Dandy Garden Suite. It's Mossy Meadow and it's beautiful. I love anything made of linen. 
so that's that so belinda likes this one too and rosie does thank you very much rosie saying be brilliant for a class yeah there's lots of things here that would be fun to do with a class i must say all right so i kept promising that i will show you how to do the gilding so i will um oh belinda's saying she hadn't thought of using the foam sheets yeah with any of our word dies um they're, they're fantastic if you have the alphabet dies as well i love to spell out someone's name or happy birthday or whatever um, and it just adds real impact to your card if they are, are dimensional like that and they're so easy to cut you just stick your card on and then cut it on cut cut the foam at the same time right more tea okay i've just realized i've forgotten to put my light on again i really am there we go gosh that's better isn't it <laughs> not as professional as i like to think i am am i all right so i've shown you then um some ideas with the gilded leafing so let me show you how to do it um the premise of this is that you put down something sticky and then you press the gold leaf onto it and the gold leaf will stick to the adhesive so if you put down adhesive in a shape then you get gold leaf in that shape and i'm calling it gold leaf it isn't gold i'm sure you know that but i will just make that very clear this is not real gold leaf this is uh, an artificial gold. OK. Um, Rosie's saying congratulations would be good raised. Yes, absolutely it would. Marjorie's loving this. She says the cards are stunning. Thank you, Marjorie. I just think this is such a lovely suite. It's difficult to make something that isn't beautiful with it. Um, it, it it's a really easy suite to work with. All right, so having explained a, a little bit about the background of, of what's going to happen with the gilding, I'm just going to show you how to do it in its um the form that they show you in the catalogue and i did have a piece of white card there we are so i've just got a piece of whisper white card here i'm going to use these stamps just to show you how to get the gold on top of some color before i do that i will show you the gilded leafing now i've put some in a box here and i've just realized i can't see my actual pot so bear with me i'm going to quickly take the microphone off me and walk two steps across and pick up the actual pot so you'll probably hear me getting fainter and fainter there we go okay clip myself back onto the microphone all right so when you order the gold leafing it comes in a gilded leafing it comes in a pot like this and it looks like a pot of gold leafing and you might think okay fine so first of all open it carefully um i don't know if you've ever been given one of those cans of peanuts which when you open it um you get some kind of spring sp springy snake come out at you <laughs> now it's nowhere near as bad as that but the the leafing flakes are really packed in here you get an awful lot for your money so just uncap it carefully because they will just rise a little bit they are not going to explode everywhere i promise you that's not going to happen but there are a lot in here so what i've done is i've got a bigger box and i've decanted some of the flakes into it now this is a i don't know what this holds this is probably a one liter box i would think and you can perhaps see how many gilding flakes i've got in there you've also seen that i've made some projects so far and let me show you what I've got left in my pot. So I've only bought one pot. That's what's left in my pot. All right. After tipping those out. Now this looks a little bit like one of those impossible puzzles, doesn't it? You know, how do you get the gilding flakes back in the pot? I don't know. But you can see you get an awful lot for your money. So my first top tip would be get a larger box, um, get an ice cream box with a lid, you might have a plastic food storage box, anything like that, um, and try if you can to make it bigger than a card front because that just makes life easier. Um, and then tip in some of your gilding flakes. I don't really know how many I've tipped in. I thought I tipped in about half the container but I don't think I've used as much as that. Um, Rosie's saying there was no puff. No, there isn't a puff as long as you're really careful when you open it. Don't you know open it and kind of throw it at the same time or you really will have gold everywhere but they're quite good tempered so some of the flakes are really large and some of them are really tiny and as you use them you will find more and more little broken pieces in the bottom but absolutely every scrap can be used so that's okay 
Now there is heat and stick powder in the catalogue which comes in a little pot but I have again decanted mine. I treat it just as I would embossing powder which means that I keep it also in a lidded box with a plastic spoon and that just makes it much easier to use and then to tip the excess back. You don't have to do that, you could work on a piece of scrap paper tip off the excess onto the paper and then funnel it back into the little pot just as you would with glitter. Um, but I have transitioned to using boxes because it's so much easier. My pound shop sells quite often three of these for a pound. Sandy's saying don't sneeze whatever you do. You're absolutely right Sandy. And Rosie's saying that a deep box is good, which it is. If you are really concerned about mess, then you can work on a tray. So I've just brought a tray in here, which I will work on. I must admit I don't usually because I don't find it's dreadfully messy. Um, do you know, I have no idea where this tray came from. Do you ever get things that just kind of arrive in your house? This looks a little bit like one of those things that you get in a, a cheap hotel with your tea and coffee making equipment on it. But I promise you I did not liberate it from a hotel. Um, I don't know where it came from, but anyway, this is an old tray. Um, so I'm going to work on this. But first of all, I'm going to stamp. So I've shown you the heat and stick. I've shown you the gilding flakes. The third thing I'm going to show you is a Versamark ink pad, which if you're a keen crafter, you probably have already in your stash. But if not, we've got these in the annual catalogue. This is a clear ink um, and it's very slow drying, almost sticky and you use it with heat embossing powder and it's also perfect to use with your heat and stick powder. So the first thing to do is to stamp in the colours I want. So I'm going to do two step stamping. I've got Real Red and Merry Merlot here. So I'm just going to, haven't inked that very well, let's try again, that's better. Stamp my first image. Um, this is the point at which I should tell you you ought really to be working on a foam mat with photopolymer stamps just so you've got a little bit of softness underneath to get you a really good image print. However, I've got quite a few layers of paper here on my desk so that's working just as well. <laughs> Rosie's saying her husband arrived in a house. She doesn't know where he came from either. <laughs> And Rosie's saying something's clean. I'm not sure what's clean, but I'm glad to hear it. All right, this is Merry Merlot. So this is the second stamp. So I'm just going to look over the top. I hope the camera will pick that up. And I'm hoping I can stamp it reasonably okay because the camera's in the way of me looking straight down on it. Oh, that's fine. The good thing about these stamps is you do not have to be absolutely accurate. They are designed to give quite a painterly look to your stamping and so there is no need to be completely exact with them. So that's two layers of stamping for my flower. So I'm now going to add a final layer with this little stamp and this is the one I'm going to stamp in Versamark. Now on, where are we, uh, this card here, the stamp I used with Versamark is this one, the one that I've just used as my second layer. So there's no rules about which ones you use for your gilding. So you won't really see this because it's a clear ink, but I'm just going to stamp that in the centre of my flower. And then I'm just going to behave exactly as if I was going to be heat embossing. I have my heat tool close by. I forgot to tell you about that. But if you do heat embossing, you'll probably have Versamark and you'll have a heat tool. So the heat and stick powder goes on just as if it was embossing powder. And you can probably see that it has stuck to my stamping in Versamark ink. I'm just going to flick that to get rid of too much of the excess. You could use an embossing buddy over this if you wanted to. I haven't because actually I don't mind if I get any little extra bits of adhesive powder stuck um, where I don't have stamping. I'll just get tiny little dots of gold leaf stuck to that and, and it looks pretty, so I don't mind. But if you want something more precise, use an embossing buddy first. And this heat and stick powder is a powdered glue. When you heat it, it melts and it becomes sticky. It's not sticky until then. So I'm going to heat up my heat gun 
and then just bring it over towards the stamping and you will see that the glue will um, melt very very quickly there so that is melted don't spend too long on it otherwise you'll find it goes past the point of being sticky so that glue is now sticky and what I'm going to do is I'll bring in my tray because I said I would <laughs> we go I'm just going to dip that in my box of gold all right now that will not look too impressive so far but don't worry about it at this point you can work with your fingers you can work with a piece of kitchen paper you can work with a fairly stiff paintbrush or my weapon of choice is a piece of stamping sponge and I'm just going to brush off the excess gold leaf and you can actually be really quite tough with this I'm, I'm pressing really quite hard because I want all the extra to not be hanging around on my stamped image and I'm working in a few different directions just to have uh, as accurate a pattern of gold leaf as I can so I think I'm pretty much there We'll put the lid on that because it is very sensitive to gusts of air or even heavy heavy breathing or sneezing or whatever so this is my tray i've got a couple of three little tiny bits of gold on it there but really i don't find this is an awfully messy process and there is my flower sandy says i make it look easy that's because it really is easy honestly sandy this is so easy um i have used leaf gilded leafing before different brands different colors um this is some of the easiest i have used and my very first attempt well i'll show you in a minute my my first attempts i've got a sort of a sample sheet um and it just worked beautifully you can see i think perhaps here i've got some little speckles of gold on my flower so that's where um i did not have stamping but i did have some little extra bits of heat and stick powder which melted i love that um, but if you don't want those, then using an embossing buddy over the top will make sure that only your flower centre is gilded. And it's got a sort of a textured look to it. It's not super shiny, um, more like mm, hammered almost gold. But I just think it's really, really beautiful. So I'm just looking at the comments to see what we've got here. Belinda saying she found the stamp to be quite sensitive to using a foam mat. She didn't get on well if she didn't use a foam mat. So that's a good tip from Belinda. Rosie wants to know if she can return her husband after 38 years. And Sandy's saying only if she has a receipt for him. Rosie says she'll look for one later. Belinda likes the little speckles too. Yeah, me too. So that very simply then is using your stamps with the gilded leafing. And if I just pull back... The cards you can see this one is pretty much identical to that as is this so you can see I really like using this center um, little flower center stamp there however you can use the gilding in other ways and I've got a bit of a sample sheet here for you this is the first one I did down here so this I stamped the large stamp and then the large detail stamp is the one I used with Versamark and added the gilded leafing. So really for first first time using it I was quite happy with that. But there are lots of other ways you can use it. The key with the gilded leafing is to just have something sticky for it to attach to and you want something that is um, a dry adhesive. If you think a little bit about sort of post-it notes you know that's it's sticky but it doesn't um, it doesn't spread on everything like a wet glue will so if you look through your glues and see what you've got that is kind of a dry adhesive so this is tear and tape just double-sided tape that I just laid down took the backing off and then pressed the leafing onto exactly as you saw me do with the flower so this would make beautiful borders or stripes this is the multi-purpose glue which I suspect you've all got and you may not know, but you can actually turn this into, the, into a repositional glue. If you put down the glue on your surface and then let it dry, 
it will dry but it will stay tacky and that's what I've done here so here I just put down some dots of it here I just drew a really simple flower and then I set it aside um, the flower took longer to dry because there's so much glue on there um, about an hour probably for the flower the dots didn't take nearly as long as that and then once they were tacky I felt them with my finger um, as long as I couldn't press them flat but it was still tacky that was perfect then again I just laid down the gold leafing and brushed off the excess this is mini glue dots just the sort that we have on the roll in the catalogue so this you could make a really fun polka dot pattern with or you could use them in the center of flowers so I literally just press them on the card and then put the gilded leafing on and then this word here is cut with a die so I used some adhesive sheet on a piece of card and then just die cut the word so this word is from uh, the sweet silhouettes but you could certainly do it with this one just want to say so that's my die cut um, let me see if I can put that on something dark it's not very helpful is it on on white there we are so that's my die cut which says forever so it's got um, adhesive on one side there we go so I stuck the adhesive sheet onto my card I cut the word and then this is the other back in here so that just peels off and now that is sticky underneath and I can apply my gilding flakes to that if you are cutting a word then you need to cut it so that your word is going to be the right way round so it's important to think about which way your die is and to make sure that um, you are cutting on the the side that's got the adhesive sheet if you like the first time I did this I cut on the side which had got the card which is stuck to the adhesive sheet but the sheet was underneath and my word was back to front so for this purpose you need to cut onto the side that's got the adhesive sheet on it you can of course do this with any of your dies um, apply adhesive sheet to the card and then just cut it with your dies and then press that into your gilding flakes and press off the extra it will work absolutely brilliantly and Triana's here hi and Triana she says a sunflower die will look great oh gosh wouldn't it that really would be absolutely fabulous so people are liking the gilding I'm really glad to hear it um, they're liking the ideas. Rosie's saying she loves the die cut uh, uh, word idea. Well written would be good too. Yes, that set of, of lots and lots and lots of words would be fabulous with this. Um, and Lorraine is, is pleased with it too and is enjoying it. Good. I'm so pleased. So don't be frightened of the gilded leafing. It's really easy to use. You just need something to stick it to. If you want to gild up your stamping, then you definitely want some heat and stick. So stamp with your Versamark ink pad, tip on heat and stick, tip off the excess and heat it with your heat tool and then it, you will have a sticky image which you can press into your gilded leafing. To make it easy to use this, open it carefully and tip just some of it into a lidded box. Make sure that this is as big as you can within reason but certainly make sure it's as big as a card front because then you can get in a whole piece like this and gild it really, really easily. And then use something to rub off the excess leafing. I like a piece of sponge. Um, this one in particular with some holes in it is just a little bit coarser and it just seems to grip the leafing and, and brush off the excess really well. Um, and, and that's it really, dead easy. Use the gilded leafing with any kind of dry adhesive. And then the fine art floral set is just absolutely beautiful. You really can do so much with this. Uh, the papers are beautiful. I will be cutting up those big acetate sheets on top of the 12 by 12 paper to um, allow me to use the two layered together because I think that would be really nice. I don't think I can get all three of these on at once, can I? Pop that down the bottom just in case. Well, Linda's saying the sunflowers would be lovely and also the hydrangea set and the poppies poppies and the peonies yep i still have those as well i haven't even got started with those with the the gilding so i think it's it's a fantastic idea do give it a go i think you'll enjoy it <clears throat> i'm just going to turn the camera back up to me and then i can say goodbye to you because if you can believe it it is three o'clock hard to believe 
but there we are. Okay, so I think, I think I'm more or less there. Hopefully you can see me again. My iPad will catch up in just a minute. Um, it's been so nice to join you again today. This is my regular slot on a Friday, two o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Um, I'm here on my page doing an hour's crafting with you. This is the stage at which I normally tell you what I'm going to do this time next week and I've absolutely no idea. I'm really sorry. I've used all my brain power this week um, and I haven't planned what I'm going to do next week. I will make uh, an event on my Facebook page though and tell you what I'll be doing. Uh, if it's something you can craft along with, then I'll list out what you can have by you to, to work along with me. Um, so look out for that in the early part of next week. But I really hope to see you at two o'clock next Friday afternoon. And thank you very much indeed for joining me. Um, if you go shopping and then you can't remember what I showed you, either find the video here on my page or hop over to my YouTube channel, which is Handmade at Home with Sally Bowman. And you'll find all the videos from this week are there. I've got a playlist for the launch week or you can just pick out the individual videos and rewatch them or fast forward to the bit that you need. It really helps me get seen by other people who might be interested if you can like and share this video. So that would really help me out if you've enjoyed it. The chances are somebody else will. So if you can hit the, the like and share buttons, that would be brilliant. Um, but until next time, I'm going to love you and leave you. I hope you have a good weekend. I'm not sure what the weather's going to do and we can't go out and do very much anyway. But hopefully you've got some crafting that you can get busy with at home. I'll just check in case there's any last comments I need to answer. Lots of thank yous. Um, thank you very much. There's some lovely comments there and I do really appreciate them. Um, have a great weekend. Bye bye.